So, good evening everyone. Thursday night here at the UMAC Center, home of the St. John's Curling Club. And tonight on sheet three, we have Teams Games versus Team O'Leary. Teams Games is throwing the blue rocks and Team O'Leary throwing the yellow. And the first rock has already been thrown by Jake. And uh, here we go. He's thrown it up front. And it seems like they're ready to rock and roll right away. No sense waiting, I guess, hey, Jeff? No, and uh, Skeens has a uh, hammer, uh, last rock advantage in the first end by virtue of draw to the button uh, being closer to the pin. So we're going to tell our viewers that we're trying something new here at the Remax Center tonight, which is that we're streaming and commentating two games at the same time. So you might get a little bit of feedback from the other game, which is obviously on the next ice to us, and that may cause uh, you some confusion, hopefully not, but uh, feel free to let us know, and uh, we'll try and combat that as best we can and see how things go. It's a bit of a trial here this evening, so we're just asking for a little bit of patience from everyone while we work out some kinks. So Team O'Leary is um, really finding themselves right away in the driver's seat here, Jeff, with uh, Team Skeens coming a little bit deep behind that guard, hey? Yeah, any time a rock is uh, slipped behind the T-line, that's an uh, advantage for your opposition for sure. As you just saw, Larry, Larry's team uh, came right up against uh, the uh, skein stone in the back of the 8-foot. And I guess Skeens will do the same thing now. He'll just uh, draw around, freeze up to the yellow. That seems to be the plan. So um, looks like it's it's a pretty good pretty good weight. Boys are just dusting it. Line's coming quite nicely here, actually, and uh, I think he's going to actually be ahead of the T line this time, which is you know a much better shot for them. So good for them. Uh, nice shot uh, by Mike Marley there. <coughs> yeah, solid start by both teams right now. Absolutely. Looks like we're going to have lots of rocks in play, which is really exciting for the uh, for us and for the and for our audience. So we've got some um, um, Team O'Leary is uh, still in the under 21s section of the. Um, Provincial playdowns, and uh, they uh, so they're a bit young for this event. But since a couple of years ago, when they opened up the age limits, um, the juniors of the provinces are able to play now toward a berth to play in the Briar, which I think is really good. It seems like the competition <coughs> around the world is doing is doing the exact same thing. They're letting uh, players play younger and younger and younger. So. I think it's good. It's good for uh, it's good for the sport, and I think uh, you know a lot of other Olympic sports, for example, have uh, players that are much younger than curlers. So, Trent Gaines trip over one of the rocks, and I guess they'll uh, confirm where it was sitting prior to him, him uh, knocking it. So. Both teams uh, so far in the round robin, uh, one win, two losses. So uh, it's an important uh, game for both. Stay in the hunt. Yeah, it's an eight-team round robin. So, um, you know, you, you've you got seven games all the way around. And, you know, you get down to three or four losses, and I think you're going to find yourself out of the, out of the playoffs. So you want to limit that to one or two. And uh, then, you know, I think you've got a good chance to make playoffs at the end of the weekend. So Trent is um, clearly um, in good shape here. He's got uh, he's got one right on the uh, T line with uh, 
a really nice protector in front of it in the eight foot and now uh, they're playing another guard to cover it again puts uh, Sean in a bit of trouble I think if they make this guard uh, nicely hey yeah and uh, Skeens has has hammer so uh, you know an opportunity for deuce here for sure Uh oh. Oh, don't tell me. Okay. <laughs> really nice placement of the guard there by uh, Spencer. This is forcing Sean's hand here now. I think he's going to have to come around everything. Yeah, I think it's a yeah. you know decent curl here. That you know a draw to the uh, rock just on the button there is is quite possible. Good. Key shot. Early. So this is a new turn for the <coughs> shot now, Jeff. There hasn't been a whole lot played down the out turn side. So the, the guys are, are uh, on fresh ice, I guess, is the, is the, the word that teams use these days and unfortunately un unfortunately for young Mr. Haddock, it, Hancock, sorry, it didn't work out so well for me. He's a bit heavy. So Dylan is probably not going to be too happy with that shot. No. So again, the advantage gains as they uh, look to either put a cap on this or uh, get, try to get another stone into the forefoot. You can see Trent's thinking about putting the uh, the freeze. Yeah, and I mean, I guess that's um, um, certainly an option, but yeah. it still leaves O'Leary with the opportunity to play the outturn freeze, it, it uh, does, which he right. just they just missed. Right. So, but if they can make it, they can be shot stone on the on the corner of that rock in the button. Yeah, so I guess that's, you know, my hesitation there is, is what really is the benefit here for, for Team Skeens to play this shot? <clears throat> yeah, Skeens could easily play the outturn himself and just draw to the top of the forefoot um, and freeze his own uh, and still be lying one and two. But they've elected to play the intern, come back to that yellow. Well, I'm sure there's no question that they know this turn better. This seems to be the way that they've tried to get into the forefoot from from the start of the end. Well, this but one's this curled up a lot more, out. yeah. Yeah, and it actually works out very well for him. I think he's probably yeah he's, he's he, taken away the corner freeze from uh, yeah. from Sean O'Leary's team now. So in, I, I don't think it was actually a bad result, even though they didn't make the shot that they called. I think it was a pretty good result. So Larry's team now just trying to move a bunch of blues out of there, throwing the hit. I think a, a wise move on their part. They don't have a lot of rocks left, so. Uh, that's a bit hard to take, I think. <laughs> really puts um, Team Skeens in the driver's seat now with the ability to come around that one, probably lie three. Yeah, and he's, he really needs to look at that because uh, with O'Leary taking that guard now, he can actually draw around it if he's mm -hmm. given the opportunity to the button, as you can see the path on your left-hand yeah. side of the screen. Uh, if they leave that for O'Leary, he'll be forced to make that draw, but it's certainly accessible for him. Yeah, and it's almost as, um, yeah, there you go. I, I was kind of waiting for Corey to take another look at the, the, the other option because they seemed, he seemed 
to be indicating that the guard was a shot to play, but I agree with you. If you leave that draw open, you're going to force the other team into greatness here, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know what happens when that happens. <laughs> anyway, they'll switch back to the, uh, the guard option. Now, to be fair to them, Jeff, maybe they know something about the outturn draw on the other side that we don't know. Maybe it's a bit straight. Absolutely. Maybe it's a little bit harder for it to curl in, something we, we aren't really aware of at this point. So. Well, it certainly wasn't the plan. Uh, no, I don't Skeins think Skeins' so. rock seemed to stay out, didn't curl as much. <clears throat> No, I mean, and it was supposed to be a guard. He was a bit heavy for guard weight, and I think as a result, it just didn't get the curl that they wanted. Now, whether or not it would have with the with better guard weight, then you know, is anyone's guess. But not what they were looking for, for sure. Well, they're focused on the right-hand side of the sheet. They're not seeing that uh, that outturn option on the left. <clears throat> and again, you might be right. It might be a tough, tougher piece of ice to to know exactly how the rocks will react. It could, it could be. But also now, with with the the. With the three blue rocks lined up to go tap, tap, tap into the forefoot, drawing around the other blue rock really puts them in harm's way. Mm. If they came T-line around, the, um, around the outturn. So this will be, be O'Leary's last rock, though. It will, yeah. So this has got to come. <coughs> something's got to. He's got to do something, but yeah. I mean, what I'll, opportunity he has to do much is really slim. Yeah, yeah so he's looking at probably hitting the, the, t the top blue one on the right hand side of your screen and uh, trying to remove a bunch of rocks um, and try to reduce the damage I guess try to keep uh, yeah. skeins to a deuce maybe um, and that's really what they're trying to do now they know they're in a bit of trouble and a, a deuce is definitely on the table it could be a three they do have this solid yellow rock in the back four that <coughs> probably isn't going anywhere so mm -hmm. You know, if they can remove at least one, maybe two rocks mm. belonging to blue, then they may keep them down to two. Yeah. It's tricky. A lot of pressure in the first end. So he's elected to play the hit on that uh, top blue and see if he can move a bunch of rocks. I don't imagine he'll be throwing a bit of weight here, Jeff. He's got he's to move a lot. That is a pretty decent shot. Yeah, so I guess force the skeins probably that outturn draw for the for the two. Yes. Of course, now they're looking at is their way of bringing the the knocking the blue on the top of the house back into the forefoot mm -hmm. and try to remove the yellow. But there's but, there is a blue rock behind it, yeah. so you know it's not really going anywhere, and I don't think it's going to be moved no. far enough to count the the blue rock that's um, that's in just you know just off the forefoot. So either way, it looks just like a, a shot for two at this point. Whatever they do so. here is yes. for two. Yeah, I think so. So not bad with uh, when you consider I think, uh, the stones that were in play for O'Leary. I think he'd be happy with that. I think he's got to be happy with that. I think the, the fact that he's going to keep the guys to two is, you know, they could have gotten there two in probably an easier way. But at the end of the day, to limit the, t the damage here to two is pretty good. That's a, that's a fine shot by uh, Sean O'Leary there. Taking care of business. Good for him. So, Rob, if we didn't do the same as Craig Davin uh, threw his first rock, which was slip back four, uh, Landy elected to put up the corner guard, and Craig has come back in the house there just. 
So Corey Shu throws the skips rocks on this uh, team's skeins and uh, thrown an intern draw for his second point here. Needs to bite the forefoot. Boys are working it pretty hard here. Oh, I guess he was playing the tap, not the draw. Okay. No, I miscounted the rocks, so obviously there's two more to play. Yes, that's, is, yeah. that's uh, with Skane thrown, fooled me up because I'm right, yeah, I'm knowing he's skipped, skip, but you're, uh, to your point, he's, uh, he's calling the game but throwing third stones. Ah, they're funny looking at that draw I've been talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are now. Yes. Boy, I hope he makes this. <laughs> Make me look so good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's nothing wrong with that. No. There's nothing wrong with that. So, yeah, sorry about that, team. Uh, to our viewing audience, Jeff and I got a little bit mixed up there. Both of the uh, team's um, skips are actually throwing. Um, sorry. Both of the teams have players moving around a little bit, so we got a bit confused there. Sorry. I'm sure any of the viewers that follow the, these teams knew the difference anyway. Yeah. They were just laughing at us. And with any luck, they were counting the rocks better than we were. Oh, absolutely. Well, unfortunately, I think they got off that a little bit thinking it was a bit heavy and then it mm -hmm. just carved right over toward the center line and they missed the opportunity there so given the uh, advantage back to team Skeins and uh, now they're looking for a way to get their two points it's not going to be easy but there is you know fairly wide path down the um, outturn to the button however team Skeins hasn't played anything over here this end so we'll no, see. they just had a good look at uh, O'Leary's yeah. attempt, so yeah. they should be pretty close. They should they should be able to to uh, determine how to get in there. Oh no, nope. no, no, no they've elected long. to play the little short race. Yep. So we can say that this is the last rock of the end. Yes, we can. And this is a shot for two. So again, trying to raise one of the blue stones in the white rings into the red. They're on it for line, trying to hold the line. Very nice throw. Yeah, nice weight. Two, two points for Skeens in the opening end. So on team, on uh, the women's game tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are curious why we're not streaming a women's game and a men's game, it's the, you know, the the equipment has to be set up on certain ices in advance, and so we just have equipment here on sheets uh, three and four. So when the women's games are on sheet four, we're going to um, stream them, but tonight they're on sheet five, unfortunately. So we're not able to show you the women's game, but I can give you an update and let you know that Team Curtis is up two to nothing on Team Hill after the first end. So Team Hill is uh, last rock going into the second. Yeah, all the cameras here at the Remax Center are permanently fixed, so it's not like TSN where we can just move the, no. tell the cameraman to move no. two sheets over. It doesn't no. work that way. No. We don't have those fancy rollers in the ceiling that allows us to move the camera back and forth, that's for sure. So 
So, Team Skeins, um, your typical first in shot when you're up a couple of points is you uh, bring the first Leeds Rock right into the top four um, in the, in the uh, six zone, I guess you'd call it, the six zone. For those uh, that use the zones of curling, there are three, three zones in the front of the house before you get to the rings. Highest zone, closest to the hog line, is zone one. Around halfway is zone two. Close to the house is zone three. And then you've got the the blue rings, which would be four. The white rings, which is five. The front red ring is six. The back red ring is seven, and so on and so on. So you, you um, teams use that, sweepers use that, to tell the skip where they think the rock is going to stop. So... For example, if you're drawing to the forefoot, you think you're going to hit the T-line, then you would be calling it as a seven. So a nice shot by Mike Mosier. That rock, because it's touching the T line or t touching the center line, cannot be removed until the sixth rock of the end. Um, there are no tick shots to be played. You cannot promote the rocks into the ring. You cannot remove it from the freeze at guard zone, and you cannot move it off of the line. So um, the rules have changed a little bit this year for uh, viewers that are new to us this evening. And that that rule is the no tick rule that the Canadian Curling Association has adopted for the Scotties and the Playdowns prior to the Scotties and also for the Briar and the Playdowns prior to the Briar. <clears throat> that rule will be in place for every end of every game that's played at the provincial level and at the national level. And again, it will be played at the world level. So Team Skeins is in pretty good shape here. They have still have a rock on the forefoot. They still have a guard in play up front. And now they're hitting this open yellow rock and hoping to roll toward the middle to put a little bit more pressure on Team O'Leary. There is fine stone, little roll to the outside. And, you know, this, uh, Kathy, this tick rule that we're talking about, all these changes that have been made over the last 15 years, it's just part of the, the players are getting just so good. Um, the old rules of not allowing uh, guards or allowing uh, guards to be cleared away from the front had to be changed. The teams are so good. Yeah. If you got up two or three points, there was nobody missing anymore, these clearing shots. So they had to restrict what stones could be removed in the early parts of the ends. And it certainly helped make the game a lot more interesting, you know, especially where a team gets down if just a few points. Uh, we now know they can come back because there's opportunities with rocks in play. Absolutely. And I think, you know, you and I, because we played in that era of curling where the game was tended to be a lot more wide open, um, it, it did get a bit boring for the for the people who were watching, and and uh, you know sometimes the teams took flack for that, which is you know unfortunate because you know they're they're just playing the game the way the game was supposed to be played. I like the idea that the curling association and the World Curling Federation are looking at it, listening to the players, and making adjustments to help make the game better for everyone, for the audiences, for the players. You know, forcing perfection is not a bad thing in sport. The equipment is better now too, though, Jeff. The equipment, the ice surfaces, they, uh, you know, it allows for a lot more perfection. The, the, uh, the ice is more predictable, so uh, players know how to make the shots that are required to be made, and uh, I think that's very helpful too. It, it does make it a lot more interesting to watch when, when, uh, when players are making really great shots. Oh yeah, with the ice conditions we have today, I mean, everything is makeable. Yeah. So Team O'Leary um, not able to capitalize so far, but here we go again for an intern draw 
around the, the center guard looking pretty good here the weights nice the lines really nice so they should be in uh, great shape here with this draw really really nice shot actually yeah fine stone they'll really be happy nice. with that uh, Andrew Andrew Trickett's uh, draw weights uh, exactly where it needs to be tonight so good for him Team Skeins just dropped that uh, rock to shore of the house, so providing another guard. They're lying shot rock on the button. And because we're in at least the sixth stone of the end, then O'Leary is allowed to clear the front, which he's, uh, which he's called. Try to open things up and get after that shot on the uh, button. Team Skeins being up a point, or sorry, up two points at this at this uh, juncture is content to either steal a point here or at worst force Team O'Leary to one point. So they're going to throw a second guard, not do anything, you know, too risky. And the beauty for, for Skeins is they're putting up a second guard. So, yes. you know, those guards will be probably <coughs> off-centered, staggered as we call it, which makes it very difficult for O'Leary to run them up into the, into the house. And that looks like a dandy. Yeah, nice, nice, very nice shot actually there by Trent. Uh, nice weight. Good distance from the other guard, which is, you know, all of those things are the goal when you're throwing a guard. O'Leary does have an opportunity here to, to uh, double run those guards off. He does risk moving his yellow shot off of the forefoot, mind you, but at the end of the day, he does have um, last rock, so he's going to want an opportunity to score. And he, right now, doesn't really have a chance to score, so he's got to move some rocks around. Yeah, he's going to open things up. Anyway, he's got one. Mm. Don't think they were actually playing for two, now that I see what they did. I think they were just playing for, to remove one. Mm. And the, I guess the school of thought there is that unless this is replaced perfectly, they do have a bump on the yellow rock that's in the forefoot to lie two, which, you know, is certainly what they'd like to see happen, but... You know, I think you've got, at some point, got to take some risks and figure out um, how you're going to score. And right now, as long as Skeins continues to put that guard back in a similar place, they're not going to be able to. Yeah, I mean, they're, hope, they're hoping that this guard doesn't curl and this leaves this yellow rock on, on the top of the red there uh, open so they could tap it back. And guards are not automatic. You know, this is, uh, you know, it's got to come to an exact point in, in, in the path. But this one looks good again. Yeah, it's a, a little higher than the last one, but the line is really good. And so that tap on the yellow rock at the top of the forefoot isn't really possible at this point. 
So now the boys are going to have to have a little chat and decide what do they do next. Yeah, they're considering the tap on the yellow. If the rock, if uh, ice curls enough to come around on the left-hand side and tap it, the other option, Kathy, is to you know play the uh, blue rock that's just out in front of the house, in on top of the yellow. Uh, would be risky because you, you'd run the risk of t picking your own yellow out. But uh, certainly, you know, it's it's a means of getting shot rock. And for yes. uh, for Leary, he's running out of time, so he, he needs is, he needs yeah. to make uh, make a move here. He's got um, he's he, exactly, and to your point, it is risky. But if you re if you reduce the weight and you play, you know, sort of a back eight type of weight, then the chances of removing your own rock are pretty slim. Um, it's a little bit more precise because you will have to deal with the curl. But uh, I think it, it, it's a it's not a bad option. There's also an out, uh, sorry, an intern draw between the yellow corner guard and the blue center guard. Although because of the way they're staggered, it's very precise because there will be curl happening as it goes through that port, but it is there. Well, they think this out turn is going to curl enough to play the tap. Yeah, well, they've got to get it by, so that, that seems by. to be that seems to be working okay. And they have tapped it. Nice shot. Very nice shot. Very nice. Blue is still shot. But yellow is lying second and third right now. And more importantly, the, his shooter just rolled to the edge of the four. So uh, Skeynes needs to deal with that. He can't leave it there because O'Leary will just come in off that mm -hmm. for, uh, for two points. Yes, however, <laughs> in doing that, they've left it open for the double for Team Skeynes as well. So... I, uh, it's, it's a bit tricky there. I th it's, it's flat. The, the two yellow rocks are almost at the same, you know, equidistant, but from the, the T line, which is the center line that runs straight across the middle of the house. However, they're very close together. So um, this, this in off double is makeable with a good amount of weight. I don't know if that's what the team Skeynes is playing or if they're just playing the hit and roll off of it. Um, but uh, it, it seems to me that it's, it's certainly there well, sure, for yeah, the taking. I'm sure they're thinking, get the inside roll anyway. They don't want to nose this. Well, they're not throwing a huge amount of weight here, Jeff. So that tells me that they're not, they're not playing the double. No, playing the enough. Whoa. And that is disaster. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, that wasn't in the plan. No. Wow, that that is such a surprise. Yeah. I don't know if it was lighter than they hoped or if it curled more than they thought it would with that weight. I'm not really sure what happened to that, but I'm you know, obviously it's not what they were looking for. No. But uh, you know, Team uh, Team O'Leary is breathing a sigh of relief right now and uh, has a great opportunity to get that two points back. Um, at the end of the day, Team Skeynes was really lucky that they didn't move their own blue rock a couple of more inches because this would be a draw for three. Yeah. So that's a bit of yeah, a surprise. Yeah, I think I'm there. surprised at the weight that uh, Corey yeah. Shue threw. Um, no reason to be light. Uh, you certainly didn't need to be thrown a rocket there but certainly you could have thrown a, a normal yeah. or a control weight hit uh, for the same result and, Absolutely. and it yeah. just over curled and uh, wow yeah O'Leary says thank you yes much. he does he does yeah anyway see if we can take advantage of that yeah so draw to the forefoot here to uh, secure the second point for Sean and uh Throwing an out turn. Boys are sweeping it pretty uh, pretty hard there for a few seconds, but they're off it now. So it seems the weight and the line 
is good on its own for, for the time being. It's got to stop. Oh, my God, little tick. Oh, no. Ah, uh, and they got uh. caught in the same path. Yeah. It overcurled, or it was a little bit heavy. They could have played the tick yeah. had they known it was a uh, little heavy. And those shots come back to haunt you at the end of it, at the mm. end of a game. But uh, that's a, really a, a tough situation for Team O'Leary to not have that chance to take advantage of of a mistake by Team Skane. So one follows the other, and we're at a two-one game now after the third end, and Team Skane's is up up the point, and they will have the last rock going into the next end. Well, that worked out. They uh, thought they were going to have to replace that rock as a uh, removing a free guard zone, but it uh, it didn't go out of play. Stuck around in the back of the uh, house. And that's the rule with the free guard zone, as opposed to the no tick rule. Is that when the when there is a guard in the free guard zone, which is anywhere in front of the house, um, except something touching the line uh, you can move it around the house put it wherever you want as long as it remains in play so because that's still back there at the end at the uh, back edge of the house it's it's still in play hasn't crossed over the back line yet so it stays Nice double there by Timo Leary. So Skeynes is going to uh, split the house, lay two. This game, to, this game tonight is actually really important to both of these games, these teams, Jeff, because they're sitting right now in the standings at one and two. And um, believe it or not, there are five teams right now tied at two and one. These guys are one game behind them, so they don't want to drop another game because with five teams ahead of you, you need to catch up at some point. So both teams will want to win this game tonight. Don't want to drop that second loss. Sorry, the third loss in their case because they both have two losses. So Dylan Hancock playing a uh, a hit and try to roll under the center, roll under the yellow guard. Always trying to make a curl. Oh, nose hit this time. Pretty wide, wide open play right now, which I think is probably good for both teams um, in that, you know, the shock of the last end is probably still there. But 
Un- unfortunately for Team O'Leary, uh, Team Skeins is really um, sitting nicely here with two rocks or the ability or the potential to sit two rocks um, with last rock. So they they could open up their uh, their um, score a little bit with with the two ender here. Nice shot, and I think that's the key for both teams now is they do need to make sure that they hit and stick. There's a little bit of a rollout here, and then just the advantage switches very quickly. Okay, so O'Leary is switching to the out turn, and again, trying to hit the blue and roll in under the yellow. Boy, that took a jump. I think they were they were not on that till the hog line. Just curled too much. It's too bad. It looked like a good throw. Yeah, it seems that the the there is a bit of uh, curl here tonight in um, that we we haven't really seen much of, not yet. And I don't know if it's again because the teams may be playing a little bit less weight to try and take advantage of some curl, and it's getting ahead of them. Maybe um, we're not sure, but yeah. So now Skeen's opportunity to lie three. This is um, yeah. This is a big advantage for Team Skeen's now to lie three and keep the play as much as they can away from the center line. Um, the good news for Team O'Leary is they still have that center guard. So. A nice uh, double and roll here, and it puts them right back into a good position. But there is, you know, un unfortunately for them, they don't have a lot of rocks left again. No. So um, uh, Sean is is uh, got his back against the wall a little bit, and he he needs to make a nice shot here for his team if he can. Oh, great stone. Made the double and the roll. Yeah, nice shot. Very nice That's shot. That's a beauty. And he's over, um, he's, he's, he's uh, rolled quite a bit, and he's over now, you know, in the vicinity of the um, Skeins Blue Rock that's in the top 12 foot. So while it shouldn't be in play, it's in your line of sight. So whenever you can put your rocks as close to someone else's as possible, then you do kind of mess with their heads a little bit. I guess you want to call it that. Um, but so it's, this is going to be in Corey's line of sight, and uh, you know you just never know what will happen. But a great shot by Sean O'Leary, to say the least. Nice roll by Corey. Um, well done. Obviously, a veteran curler uh, didn't wasn't bothered by you know any rocks in his way. Um, he made a nice roll, and he also um, rolled a little bit further than the center line, which is kind of nice. So uh, now Timo Larry has to get the roll under the middle, 
can't really play a freeze. If Corey's rock had not curled as far as it did, then the come around freeze would have put the O'Leary team in, in pretty good shape. So mm. it was very important for Team Skeins to roll as far as they did and good for them. They should have accomplished. So out turn hit and roll here for Sean. Uh, it would be good for him to roll in behind the center line. It, it then makes um, Team Skeins' shot just a little bit harder. It's not an open hit to lie to then. It becomes more of a tap type of shot, a little bit more precise, a little bit more unpredictable because it's less weight. So a roll would be really good here. Ooh. I hear a lot of the screaming, Jeff. I don't think this bodes well for how much curl is happening here. So, uh, oh, yikes. So it's, that's, it's that's two stones curl, in the yeah. same spot. Yeah, that uh, it's it's tricking them for sure. Yeah. So huge advantage here now at the team's gains for, for a, a, an open draw to lie to uh, for three-ender, I should say. Um, very disappointing, I'm sure, for Sean and team. But like you said, everyone seems to be getting tricked in that particular spot there where everything is over curling. Boys around this uh, draw right away. They need some help. Trent out to give him a hand. All hands on deck here. Uh, looks like they're okay though. Might have enough juice. Yep. Looks like a good sweep. Big sweep. <laughs> yeah, great job by the sweepers. They picked it up right away. So that's three for Skeins. Up five and one. After three ends of play. Yeah, that's a pretty big lead, but not insurmountable. So, you know, I'm sure the boys will give it another go, try and regroup again, and uh, see if they can get a couple of points back. I think you'll see some guards in play this end coming up. So while we're waiting for um, the, the remainder of this game, we'll just give you a couple of updates on the scores of the other ices. We have some key games going on tonight with the leaders of the pack. And on sheet one, we have Team Simmons playing Team Young. Both teams are in the lead at two and one uh, record after, um, at this point in the round robin. And Team Simmons is up two to one on Team Young. Uh, team, team Smith is playing Team Thomas from Port of Basque. And right now, Team Smith is up three to two after three ends. And on sheet four, which is the other game that's being streamed um, from the Remax Center this evening, it's all tied up at two to two with uh, uh, Team Pettigrew playing Team McNeil Lambswood. Both those teams are also at two and one in the standings. So um, each, each of them will be looking for their third win um, as of tonight. And in the women's game, it's two, sorry, four to one for Team Curtis over Team Hill after three ends. They're just um, starting the fourth now. So that brings you up to date on all of the games going on here at the Curling Club. And our game is um, ready, set, go here. And first rock at the top of the forefoot again. Some fairly, really accurate curling by Mike Mosher. He's been uh, playing very well all uh, weekend so far, so uh, no no surprise that he makes his, his uh, draw to the top four. He's just been stellar. Team, team O'Leary putting up the corner guard as they would, and, um, and here we go. Uh, team Skeins will put up another guard, and we're going to be deep into some fancy curling again in a minute.
And a perfect guard there for Mosier. Larry calling the freeze on the rock in the forefoot. And the sweepers are working this really hard, trying to clear the uh, center guard. Just squeezes by. Some great sweeping there. Nice stone. Little Very tap nice, back. Yeah. That's yeah, excellent result. Great, great sweeping there. So an intern come around here for Team Skeins. They've elected to go the other way to try and get in and sit on the corner of that yellow rock that Team O'Leary just put at the top of the forefoot. Get some staggering going on here and make it really hard for Team O'Leary to remove the blue rock that's right on the tee line. This is a little bit heavy. So you don't, when you're playing that type of uh, shot, you don't really want to um, roll off of the guard that you're trying to sit on the corner of it because it does um, open it open it up for an easier uh, double takeout at some point for team O'Leary um, had they sat on the yellow rock then of course the the blue rock on the on the tee line would be protected unfortunately for team Skeins, they just knocked it a little bit and rolled off of it so that gives a little bit of an advantage now to team O'Leary So they're just going to tap, tap and try and promote their own rock to shot. I think he wanted to throw a little more weight there and maybe yeah. maybe move the blue rock off the button. I think so. Um, it, it looks to me like it might have overcurled a little bit mm -hmm. on them as well. I don't think that that was their intention. I, I yeah. think they would have liked those reversed, so the top rock to be a little bit further to the left, you know. But uh, they're happy, I'm sure, to have a couple of rocks in play. Team, uh, it looks like uh, Trent has has kind of changed his mind here now, and he's, a, he's not as happy as he was to see a couple of yellow rocks in play. So he's going to... He's going to try and make something happen with this top blue rock now, and uh, try and drive it into the into the f uh, into the pile. Into the pile, yeah. I was looking for another word, but I don't know what that <laughs> word was. <laughs> so yeah, um, he's trying to drive it into the pile and see what he gets out of it. And not exactly what he would have liked, but no. it is opened up, and uh, they can you know uh, they can uh, take a. They can take a, a whack, I suppose, at There's some of the yellow rocks now because there won't be any guards in play. But effectively now, O'Leary has a freeze, which is good. So yes, he's, he he's drawing around the corner guard. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what he hopes is at some point he'll get a chance to tap that yellow one in the forefoot and knock out the, re the blue. If I were him, I'd be thinking... Let's get some more of our rocks in play here while the other team tries to figure out how to get rid of our yellow rocks that are on the forefoot. So certainly um, a good opportunity for them to give that a, a whirl. Ah, unfortunate. Unfortunate. A little bit short. Does leave them with a couple of really nice corner guards, though. So they're not out of this yet, and they do, um, you know, they do have lots of opportunity. That yellow rock that's at the top of the forefoot is not going anywhere without two shots. So um, they're still in they're still in good shape here. So a hit being called here on the uh, yellow stone. I think that's a safe call. If you, you know, if the Skeins team tries to fool around with that yellow rock that's at the top of the forefoot, it's just going to mess things up, and there's no advantage to them to try that. I like this call. 
just get rid of something. They are up five to one, so they don't need to actually score points. What they need to do now, and their their mission for the rest of this game is to eliminate as many O'Leary Rocks as they can. Yeah, they know at some point O'Leary will have to, to make a play mm -hmm. on that yellow, and at that uh, at that point, you know, Skeens is figuring he'll have open hit to remove one or two of them. This rock has a uh, really great weight, nice line. Should be in great position to lie number three here. So good shot, really good shot for uh, Team O'Leary. Puts them in a, in a great position. Their rock is, is still ahead of the Skeynes rock, so Skeynes has to deal with that. And now they've put uh, the third shot into play. So they're, they're basically piling up a little bit more pressure on Team Skeynes with every shot here. So. They're looking pretty good right now. Um, they just need to hold fast and see how the rest of the send plays out. Yeah, they've certainly upped the ante here in this, this end. If uh, if someone if there's a miss on Skane's part, then it could be a multiple point end for Leary. So I think they're uh, still playing a hit. Team Skane's. Yeah, I suspect it's probably as thin as possible to try mm. and pick it off of there. And it, yeah, you know, move the worst, works. Yeah, worst case scenario is they take all of it, but they certainly don't want to yeah. jam it back on the no. blue. So, yeah, um, yellow, yeah. the yellow and blue will be gone after the shot. That's their objective. Yes. Looks pretty close. Nice looking shot here. Yep. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, really nice shot with a yeah. great roll, actually. So yeah. um, hats off to Trent Skeynes there. That was uh, probably the one way he could get out of this end, and, and he's accomplished it. So really, really great shot there. That said, all is not lost here for Team O'Leary because they still have a lot of guards in play, and they have... They're in the driver's seat here. They can uh, draw around both those yellow rocks. Um, come in ahead of the blue but um, leave it in such a place that uh, yeah, just Trent tries to fool around with it he may take his own blue out so you know and you know even that is not necessary if they can just get it buried behind these two yellow rocks they're in really good shape Yeah, they'd like to have this rest come to rest just touching the red, the red ring under the uh, yellow stone. <coughs> ah, a little deep, so that's not great. Yeah. They are lying number two and three, though. So Trent has to be careful, make sure that he doesn't set something up so that the boys can either play a double or a run back. And right now they do have a run back available. Um, on the two yellows, so Trent has to be careful. He he is going to need to come in lie two, or somehow take away that run back. So see how how um, see what he decides to do here now in the next minute or so. So in the Young Simmons game, while we're waiting here, a um, bit of a uh, switch in the lead there, and uh, Team Young is now up a point on Team Simmons. After four ends, is three to two.
I think this is just a guard. No, no, they're bringing it in. I think they're coming all the way deep, are they? Yeah. Boy, that's not curling much. So now that left a double takeout for O'Leary. Yeah. Yeah, exactly Gee whiz. what we were talking about, uh, Jeff. There, yeah. do you know that's the 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 caution, and unfortunately, that's the the drawback there with playing that type of shot is you do have to make sure that you get it deep or deeper than your own rock which yeah i think they happen. were so they were they were planning to come back to that they were, rock yeah. in the in the back of the fourth with there the yellowstone so this is a huge opportunity for larry they really this this is a must make stone great opportunity to get back in the game there's still a couple more rocks to play after this but uh, it would certainly put uh, team o'leary in a great great shape and put a lot of pressure on team skeins which they haven't really had in the last uh, few rocks for sure Boy, it didn't move either. No. Gee. So you get about a foot off of the line, and it seems to curl a little bit, but you get that. Uh, then you tighten yeah. up the ice a little bit, and it doesn't curl enough. So that's uh, too bad for Sean. Looked like a well-thrown shot. It did. Um, and not a lot of weight. I'm kind of no. surprised. So Trent has a decision to make here now, and he's certainly been let off the hook for the time being. Um, he can play that hit and hope to get the double, um, or you know, I yeah, guess you can throw a guard if you, you want can to throw a guard, force but him to one. Yeah, but they're still worried about the run backs. The that run are out back there is, yeah, exactly. It's still you know, there. Isn't he it? makes one shot and he, he gets four. So yeah, Trent is just there. You can see him. He's lining up the double takeout. So just hitting, just hitting off the nose of that rock where his broom is, and trying to take the backstone away as well. I think he's a little tight out of his hand here, Jeff. So they're going to have to go hard at this. So they don't take the front. Well, he hasn't actually taken away the three-ender, has he? Well, maybe. I know he moved the top yellow. No, so yellow is still number two and number three. So now they have a slash double for two points. Yeah, they're... Uh you see him there lining up the double, trying to, as you say, slash the blue rock t to the right and then uh, try to take out the uh, two blue stones. It's really their best opportunity mm. for two points, and I don't think you want to draw and, and draw for one here if you've got a chance for two. Mm. It's a bit of a harder shot, obviously. It's a bit, little bit more precise, and uh, certainly, uh, certainly it's in the hands of the the thrower to some degree, but also in the hands of the of the, the caller because it's um, these are hard to call. They're line calling, yeah. yeah. The line caller is uh, these, these are hard to call, so it'll be a bit tricky, but um, I think worth the effort for two points. All right, so a bit of a gamble here. O'Leary taking advantage of the opportunity. This would be a big boost for their team if he could make this double Absolutely. and, and yep. put, a, put a two on the board. It's pretty close. Uh, 
Yeah. Very close. <laughs> nice try. Yeah, very close. Made contact. Uh, just needed his his rock needed to curl up just a little bit more, and he had, he had that shot. It actually looks like it backed off the center line there for a minute, uh, Jeff, from uh, mm. slipping down on the ice. So might be a bit of a fall or a bit of a um, s straight spot there, unfortunately. So another point for Team Skeins. 6-1. On, sheet, on uh, one of the other sheets here, uh, Team Smith playing. Team Thomas from Port Basque and Team Smith is up five to two after four ends there in the middle of the fifth. So we just um, also got an update on the uh, McNeil, Lambswood, and Pettigrew game, and um, we're we're hearing that there was a, a pick uh, with one of the skips rocks with the, the Pettigrew uh, rock, and um, consequently a four ender for McNeil, Lambswood. So they are leading now six to two after four ends, and they're um, playing the fifth now as well. So you can see Trent indicating um, back to deep into the house, and I think the point of that he's making to his team is is if it's going to be if the rock is going to be deep, then take it all the way out because we don't want to leave anything around now for the other team to play uh, with or you know use as a guard or use to be able to freeze to. Being up six to one points um, at this point in the game, they're they're. You know their goal now is to keep as many blue as many blue rocks in play as they can. Well, sorry, as, as few rocks in play as they can. Uh, most especially all of the yellow ones. So while we're watching Team O'Leary, actually, we should uh, pass along our congratulations to this young team who will be traveling to the under-21s in, um, in 2023, representing Newfoundland and Labrador. They just won last weekend. I think it was last weekend? It was last yeah. weekend, yeah. Yeah, great, great uh, victory for them. Hard work pays off. O'Leary team uh, spent a lot of time on the ice and they're in playing in all the events, improving their game. Yeah, good for them. They uh, beat the reigning champs, uh, Nathan Young, who um, went to the under 21s last year from here, I think. And uh, so that's, you know, a bit of a coup for Team O'Leary as well. You know, it's always nice to beat the defending champs. Um, both teams are going to be uh, able to go to the Nationals, though, so that's uh, a bonus for Team Young, who um, even in their second place are going to uh, be able to travel. So that's, that's really nice, actually. Yeah, by virtue of the performance they had at last year's National, mm -hmm. uh, Team Young finished uh, very, uh, very much on top of the standings and uh, allowed Newfoundland to get a double spot two births in mm -hmm. the championship. So that was uh, wonderful. And wonderful for O'Leary to actually win his spot outright. Mm -hmm. Good for him. Absolutely. And, you know, and good for uh, Nathan and a nice, uh, I mean, he was the one, his, him and his team, I should say, are the ones that uh, got us the two births. And so fitting for them to have been, have earned the second one. So good for them. No, you know what? I looked, I looked it up, but um, now that I'm looking at it, I'm reading. It was 22-23, right? Yeah. Right. 
So in our game, uh, Skeens uh, with two uh, two counters in the center of the sheet, and Larry with his two corner guards. So uh, opportunities here for both. Mm -hmm. So I got to take a second here to eat crow, Jeff. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I do. I said to uh, some fellow commentators uh, yesterday, I think it was that I said, it, "I'm finding it really hard keeping track of all the junior teams because of the under 18s, the under 21s, and the Winter Games this year, and the teams are all winning this and that." And I did fool it up. It actually isn't Team O'Leary that's going to the under 21s. It's Team Perry that's going to the under 21s. Oh, so my apologies. My apologies Perry, to Team Perry. Perry O'Leary. Yes. Yeah. There. And Team O'Leary was there last year with Team Young, oh. so my uh, yeah my apologies my apologies there to Team Perry. So congratulations, boys! And nevertheless, we're still going to be cheering for you. So that uh, draw attempt now around the corner came up short. Uh, Skeen's trying to figure out how do I keep this clean. He's up six to one. So clear the front, which is what he's indicated here now. He's going to throw uh, a high speed hit down there and try mm -hmm. to remove a couple of stones. It looks. It looks from. You know, from this screenshot here, it actually looks as though one of those yellow rocks may come directly back to the blue one behind Corey. But I think they're very close together, so um, there will get they will get some drag effect. So if um, if Trent can hit the the centerline side of this, both rocks should go towards the the boards. And they did, as you just saw. Yeah, they both went to the left. So for if there are any young curlers watching, there's something to be learned from what happened to those two yellow rocks, actually. And it's an experiment that you can have or play when you're out on the ice and, you know, you're just out throwing rocks and fooling around and not really playing a game put rocks together and hit them from both sides and see what happens to them. And then spread them out an inch or two inches, three inches, and see, I think when you get to about four inches of separation, you'll find out there's no more drag. But it is a good experiment, and it does teach you, um, you know, a few tricks as to how rocks react when they're both hit at the same time. Well, that worked out. Nice little tick and roll and uh, take out. Yeah, I think they uh, they did get a bit lucky there for sure. But you know, we at this point in the game, you take whatever luck that is coming your way. So, I think they'll be uh, happy enough with that. Does leave an open hit for Team Skeins. Um Still, some rocks to come. And we do still have a corner guard over on the other side, which we might see Team O'Leary try and take advantage of. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's a bit. It's a bit wide, but it's there, and it is. It's available to them. 
And with this rollout, they may try and do something with that now because uh, they will feel a little less less risk. Yep, calling so the hit and roll. Calling the hit and roll. Um, mm -hmm. It is late in the end, so you do have to be careful about leaving blue rocks in play. Very makeable shot. I might be inclined to play the draw in the meantime, get it in behind and see and see what teams gains does. <clears throat> Is hanging a little bit, so they're going to try and carve it a bit. See if they get the right roll here. Uh, unfortunately, a little bit too much roll, so uh, that leaves a very open house now. And Team Skeins will just remove the guard and all opportunities for Team O'Leary to hide anywhere. Yeah, you had to stick around in that shot for sure. You do. Yeah, yeah. you have to keep the play yep. away from your corner guard so that you may get the opportunity to use it. And unfortunately, that didn't work out for them. So straight peel for Team Skeins. Called and made, and now Team O'Leary will just have to draw in and cross their fingers. Very drawn to the open side. So strategy now is uh, blank this end and try again in the sixth. Try again the sixth for your multiple points. Hold on the hammer. Don't often, um, in my experience, um, we didn't play these shots from the center line outward. We played them out, turn in. You know what I mean, like from the outside in. This is an interesting way to play this shot in my mind. But again, because we're on those spots where we're getting some curl that is unexpected, that may be the reason that uh, that this team has decided to go the other way and not take the chance. They get the roll out. So Team O'Leary has uh, decisions to make. I mean, they could certainly take a point and try and switch the momentum of the game here, but I think they'd rather blank. And, oh, uh, yeah. You know. Play the blank and, yeah. uh, and go into uh, the sixth end with Hammer again. Yeah, yeah that's what they're doing. If not, that's the worst draw weight I've seen this week. <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll say it's Very a funny. blank. Very funny. <laughs> so we will uh, take a break for the uh, fifth end here um, along with the teams, and we'll be back in a few minutes.
Well, welcome back. Hope you've enjoyed your few minutes break. Back in the sixth end. And you can see that uh, Skeynes being up 6-1 is uh, keeping things clean. Just drew uh, into the top of the eight foot. And uh, trying to get points back on the board. Team O'Leary is uh, putting up the corner guard. So traditional start here. Yes. Drawing it's certainly, in, yep. going to guard. And now uh, Skeynes is looking at uh, putting up another guard, tight guard on that. That came over. It did. It curled. Yep. It, yeah, it's more well, of a corner as, guard for Team O'Leary, yeah. I think, than it is a center well, guard, isn't it? it? Yeah. So Team O'Leary won't, uh, they won't argue with that, and they'll... Uh, I imagine try and take advantage of it actually if I were them that's what I would be doing now in the meantime this is the first time I've seen this in this the few games that we've uh, been watching Jeff is uh, this team seem is keen on the double guard yeah putting up a second yeah. guard yeah and then and, you know it to each his own yeah. uh, some and maybe they're doing it because the team's gains rock came off of the center line and now effectively it is a corner Absolutely. guard on the other side. So yeah. they can take the luxury and put up the second guard. Some teams do it anyway, even when there is nothing in play on the other side, just for added protection. But uh, it's it's I think it's an individual team thing. I don't know if either one is an advantage over the other. Yeah, and they could do it. They uh, had no worries. The skein stone was open, so they knew they could hit it. Mm-hmm. Uh, gave him a chance to put the second guard up. And look, they're down 6-1. They need to put rocks in play. They do. And, uh, you know, there's no there's no points for only losing by a little bit. So you need to put your best foot forward here and... and uh, so this is an interesting... Uh, this in is an interesting situation. So the tick bang causes the free guard zone rock to hit the boards. So it goes back. So the whole... All the rocks go back in play, exactly. even though yeah. even though they tick their own first. All the rocks go back in play, so they yeah. don't. Team yeah. Skeins doesn't even get an opportunity to remove their own stone. Yeah. Anyway, they managed. Bit, I think they put them back pretty close yeah. to where they were. Bit unlucky on the part of Team Skeins, but you know, once again, Team O'Leary is in a position to take full advantage of that. So, let's see what they do with it. They're certainly getting an awful lot of opportunities to uh, put some rocks in play here. Like you said, Jeff, that that's what they need to do, and I think that's exactly the opportunity that they're, they've got now. So hopefully they'll be able to take advantage of it. Nice, very nice. The, uh, yeah, nice back, back eight foot. Line looks good on that. It's um, it's it's buried. I I think the team skeins could certainly draw around and sit on it, but they're not likely to want to do that. They will want to peel off some guards, and you know, at this point, if, if Team O'Leary gets two points, they're going to say, "Yep, yeah, fine, you can have your two points," but you know, they're going to try and eliminate any possibility of more than that. So no doubt they're clear in the front. It's just a matter of which direction are they driving this yellow? Are they driving the straight back? Are they just driving it out to the right? We I shall I'm, see. I'd be, uh, I would be inclined to be driving it toward the boards just because I don't know that you want to uh, jam it on your own. Mm -hmm. 
They got rid of both of them. Yeah, Yeah. they got rid of both of them. So they left the guard in play, which was all that they could do. In order to get rid of the two yellow ones, you didn't have any other choice but to leave that blue guard in play. The the beauty of it now is that it does belong to Team Skeins. From Team Skeins' perspective, they'd rather have one blue up there than two yellow. So even though they don't want guards in play, at least it is their own. And, and this, in doing so, they've opened up the uh, yellow stone in the back mm-hmm. of the uh, forefoot there, back mm-hmm. of the eight. Exactly. And from Team O'Leary's perspective, they don't really care what color the guards are now. They're just going to take advantage of whatever they have that they can take advantage of. So good for them. Nice draw. Beautiful. Two shots right, right behind the guard now. So... They're, they're buried well enough that uh, Team Skeins is not going after that. They're going to take this guard off now and look for a better opportunity to try and remove those two yellow rocks later on in the end. Trent throwing the peel, trying to clear it. Ooh, rolls the center. Almost, almost rolled to the center guard, but uh, so does not roll a little too far. Team O'Leary has some uh, choices now. They can go around those two blue rocks, or they, can, as you see, the indication is that they're going to guard their own two rocks, and I think that's a wise choice because you do have two yellow rocks here. They are grouped together, but you are lying two. Number two and number three, mind you, but still, you want to protect as many of your rocks as you can. So putting a guard on this, I think, is a good idea. But, you know, another option is to play on the blue, roll under the two corner guards there, the two blue guards. It is, Jeff, you're right. I think that if they can continue to guard these two yellow rocks, though, it's some, and if Trent's team continues to peel... There is still an opportunity, albeit um, as maybe not as good as it was a few minutes ago, an opportunity for three. But um, if you hit the blue and roll under, Team Skeins is going after these two right over here, and then they're gone. That said, you go under again, and the three ender might still be in play. So we'll see how it pans out. Both are good choices. Well, it does trick, opens up the uh, yellows again. They're having a hard time getting rid of those guards, though, Jeff. They're leaving them in play. Yeah. So Team O'Leary's got two options now. They can go, they can roll either way. They're, they're, they're indicating that they would like to roll over um, behind the rock on the right-hand side of the screen, which basically, if it rolls a little bit too far, they've got a Christmas tree effect on all of these yellow rocks, which is pretty good, uh, pretty good place to be as well. So... Important to hit and stick somewhere in the rings here. So they're not throwing a whole lot of weight. So they stuck. Yeah, I got them bunched up there with uh, giving it a double. It's too bad. Yeah, it's it's a tough situation. You know, sometimes you're trying so hard to not do the things that you end up doing. Um, But he's stuck, and he is line three, and there is a little bit of pressure on Team Skeins now. So from that perspective, good for them. Not the ideal role that they would have liked to have, but it's it's not absolutely awful because they still lie three. So we'll see if if Trent can do something with this. This is a difficult double to remove both of those at the same time from this angle coming at it from the other side you might be able to do it because they don't have far to travel but right now playing it from this angle I think uh, it's hard and 
Trent will be happy to remove two of the three of these rocks, obviously, but I don't think three of them are going. Oh, nice stone. Very nice stone. Very nice stone. They did move the yellow rock a little closer to the center, however. So it is partially covered by that, that corner guard that's up top. So Team O'Leary is still in pretty good shape here. They still have uh, two rocks left, and they have opportunity to score. Yeah, so if they can get around this corner guard, mm -hmm. and even if, as you said, produce the Christmas tree effect and have it yeah. over curl a bit and just uh, cover up a little bit of the yellow one that's on the T-line. Makes it that more difficult for uh, Skeins to take it out. They need a miss Three to get... Three big yeah. here now. They need a miss out of Team Skeins to score three, but they are in a position to make Trent, uh, Team Skeins' last rock very difficult, so... So all they can do right now is uh, get this buried and hope for the best. It's a little bit wide of target, so the boys are off it right now. Let it a little bit heavy, so they're letting it die a bit. So line, t line two behind the guard. Unfortunately, they've given uh, Team Skeins a pocket to sit in, but uh, um, they've also shown them shown um, them the outside of this rock. So what they'll decide to do is being discussed here now. Looks like they're deciding to. To play the freeze. Toward playing the freeze, yeah. So um, on um, update on the Simmons Young game, um, Young has scored two in the sixth end, so they're up five to three now over Team Simmons. Um, Greg Smith continues to lead his game over Thomas, uh, six to three after six ends. In the women's uh, game a few more uh, scores have been put up team Curtis now leads six to three over team Hill however with that three-point lead they also have last rock going uh, in uh, they're playing the uh, sixth end now and team Pettigrew is seven to two down seven to two against team McNeil Lampswood All hands off this stone, waiting for it to cut and dig, which it did. It did, Jeff, but it's available to Team O'Leary to score three open, points. Yeah. So this is um, this is a huge opportunity for Team O'Leary. I'd like to um, Just a see them take back. a minute or two now to make sure that they place the broom in the right place and uh, they're, they're sure of what, what weight they're throwing. You know, take an extra second here, a very important shot. Looking at the ice, or throwing pretty quiet weight, you know, maybe just through the house type weight. Yeah, um, he doesn't actually even need to punch it through. He just needs to punch it to the back 12 to score his three. So he doesn't need a whole lot of weight. He's just indicating from the hack now to widen up the ice a little bit. So he wasn't quite happy with where he had the broom. So here we go, out turn tap for potentially three points. That will change this game a little bit. Weight looks really nice. Yeah, it is curling close. a little bit. It's curling a little bit for them. Very close. Uh, 
just needed to curdle another mm. little tiny bit to get past that back one, but they did get their two points out of it, which is, is uh, good for them. Yeah, it keeps things going, keep mm -hmm. it interesting. So 6-3 to three now for um, Team Skeins over Team O'Leary. We're just finished the sixth end. We're uh, playing the seventh now in no time. Team O'Leary with first rock for a change, which is nice. Sometimes nice new strategy for yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ch and sometimes change is good as the rest, as they say. So yeah, yeah. go put up put up the center guard. Change is good, and and it it does flip the momentum of the, the game a little bit. It makes sure it everybody does. change. Uh, it makes everybody's strategy, you know, yeah. go like say, for, I guess from you know one end to the other. But um, I've always found. Um, in the course of our careers, Jeff, how many times have we said, if we could just get a point and give away the last rock for an end or two and see if we could generate something from the other side of the game? Um, so, you know, that might happen here for Team O'Leary. You never know. Uh, you just have to take it one rock at a time either way. And we'll all wait and see how this pans out. So Looks like Gaines keeping things pretty yeah. tidy and just drawn into the house. He's having no part of the middle, for no. sure. He's like, no, no, the middle, no not playing guards. there. <laughs> just put it in the house. Yeah, well, I don't want to play over there. Let's play over here instead. And, you know, Team O'Leary, because they are down a couple of points, they don't have a lot of choice here. They have to ignore that rock and just continue to keep play in the middle and try and steal a couple of points. If they can. One, for sure. But if they can, more than one. So Trent is going same same plan over to the wings. Mike Moser's been asked to draw another shot into the house in front of the one he just threw. Make it better, by, basically. Another one deep. Yep. There you go. So now it's time. O'Leary figures it's time to make a move. Go in undercover. Mm hmm. And, you know, good for them so far because they, uh, both those rocks um, are on the, sorry, in the free guard zone, but also touching the center line. So they aren't able to be removed, moved, ticked, or anything. So really, really nice curling there. Now they've like to try and get around it. This looks really short though. Did we miss a call, Jeff? Was it another guard? I don't think so. No, okay. No, I think the plan was to come around. Okay. Yeah. If I'm reading body language right, mm -hmm. yeah, that's not what they asked for. <laughs> no, that's not what they asked for. <laughs> Yeah, so now Skeins is on uh, 
peel duty and they're just going to try to clear as many rocks out of the front of the house as they can. Make sure they can get their one point in this end. They want the opportunity to be able to uh, throw one to the forefoot at the worst, you know, so the goal will be to open it up, make it available to Corey to throw that draw if he needs to. And they won't mind taking a point because it's, you know, it will put them up seven to three, so. Yeah, keep control of the yeah. game. They just don't want to give away any points, so their goal here will be to score to blank. To, you know, it's a bit early to say what will happen, but with the rocks in play as they are, I don't think a blank is going to happen. So well, this is a really good. nice looking yeah. rock from Andrew. It's curling very nicely. Top four, biting the, biting the forefoot. Lovely shot. Very nice. Trent's not going to care about it, though. He's just going to hit the front, and that's the way he's going to play this end out. Just one peel by the look of it, not going after the double peel either. He's not um, hes not in any hurry. He doesn't seem to be in any hurry or in any panic to get rid of both guards at once. You have to be careful with those double peels because you do tend to send them back onto your own rocks in the house. So this is probably a good call. Yeah, well done. So in the ladies game, uh, Team Curtis has scored their two, so they're up eight to three now over Team Hill. Playing in the seventh end. And in our game, we're gonna try and replace the guard, or team, I should, not we, but uh, Team O'Leary is gonna try and replace the guard that uh, Team Skeins just removed. They're gonna go into protection mode now. This is curling pretty hard though, Jeff. Hopefully uh, get a little rub off of this other yellow one wouldn't hurt them. Ah, oh, went around it. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess they're lined up, so uh, he's mm -hmm. just going to clear the front, get get the two of them. He can get both of those and roll his shooter to the, to the to the side. Yes. And he won't be on. Um, he won't be hugely upset with the corner guard. I mean, he does no. have less rock here. He just wants to move this off the center line. Yeah. And open, open up, up the yellow. Yeah. Open up access to the one that's at the top of the forefoot, so he can uh, remove that later on in the end. And of course, Timo O'Leary is going to continue to replace the guard. So play will continue as it has for the next few rocks. So not what they would have hoped for. I think he would have liked a little bit of a roll to the right, but he didn't get it. So Team O'Leary is happy with that. They're going to replace that guard and and, uh, and double guard the top four foot. So all these teams are vying for a place to um, or a placement at the Briar, which is happening in London, Ontario, in March. They will somewhat accompany Team Guju, who is going back as Team Canada. So we'll have two teams at the Briar this year from Newfoundland and Labrador again, which is kind of nice. No one in this province minds when Brad wins the Nationals. No, that's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah, there's a little extra level of interest amongst the sure. competitors, isn't there? Yeah. 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 So a nice shot by Team O'Leary. A little deeper, I think, than they would have liked. But now they've got Team Skeins thinking about things. So they peel it. As Corey just indicated, they peel it one way and it's jamming on their blue rocks. Mm. They can't really peel it the other way because you can't get past the blue rock. So what do we do? Straight back, maybe? Yeah. If they'd get out of our way, we could see where the rocks are. They would. Yeah. Yeah, if they would. Excuse me. Move away, please. Yes. I think there is a double available on the two shots. It's you know it's tricky to negotiate them past the two blue in the back, but it's there. 
if you nose hit the rock that we can see, they will remove both, and I don't think it will come in contact with the blue rock. But you can, oh, there you go, you can see it right between the two guys' shoulders there. If they play it across the top, that's the tricky one, because if yeah. it doesn't quite curl enough, then you're hitting it right into your own. Yes. So. There we go. Nice. Yeah, it's a bit of a tangle, isn't it? It is a bit tangly, yeah. And there's a lot of discussion going on down there. For sure. I mean, the, the run back mm -hmm. yellow on the yellow is there. Yes, it is. But as you say, the risk is you hit it too far on the outside and, and you run it into the two blues, mm -hmm. as Trent is showing you there now. And. Uh, a yeah. nose hit doesn't really buy you anything because you're going to leave two guards up front. Mm. So that's that's tricky. I don't think they uh, I don't think they want to do that. So there's a lot of discussions. Don't think they've called a timeout yet. So they may have lots of time on their clock, and they're not worried about that. I don't I don't know exactly, but. So the broom's gone down at about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock on that yellow rock up front. So an intern hit of some sort. Yeah, I think I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah, there I'm are assuming risks, it's. But I mean, he needs yeah. to clear that front. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, he's, you know, he's going to have to draw to the button for his one. Anyway, so, you know, I think the risk here is worth it. Anyway, boys are on the herd trying to hold the line. Oh, uh, just a little rub tipped. and another little rub. Yikes. Well, that wasn't the plan. No, ouch. Must he got that um, that one curled a lot, Jeff? I don't mm -hmm. know if he got it going or um, yeah, might have been a little tight. I'm not sure because we can't really see them throwing mm -hmm. per se. But uh, either way, not what they wanted. This, all that discussion really was for naught because they didn't uh, they didn't accomplish you know the plan A or plan B. <clears throat> so far, Larry now is take advantage of that miss and mm -hmm. uh, play the out turn in around the yellow to the button. Added complexity for Team Skeins is that they've actually put these guards in a better place for Team O'Leary now mm -hmm. because there's no way to get rid of the rock that's yeah. on the 12 or on the forefoot without jamming it on the blue. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, they've really yeah. kind of made a mess of things for themselves here. Team Skeins is happy in the mean, or sorry, Team O'Leary is happy in the meantime. Now they get to draw around lie two. This is a big shot for Sean. I'm going to take an extra second. Make sure, as well as you can, you've, you're throwing the weight you want to throw. This is, uh, looks, oh, it looked like it was straight, and then it, it just took off. Oh, that's really unfortunate for them. Hmm. <laughs> Once again, down that, that line that just uh, mm. curled unexpectedly. It's too bad because the sweepers were on it, and then they stopped. And as soon as they stopped, it was too late. <laughs> So down the skips rocks here in the seventh. Skeins up 6-3, and he has hammer. 
So he's going to try and clear the front again. <laughs> this time from the other side. The room is there. I think, you know, the uh, guard is, he sees enough of that yellow stone to drive it back on the yellow stone in the, in the forefoot. Mm -hmm. Pick the two of them out. Should he'll get the added bonus of rolling over in front of his other two blue yeah. rocks too, I think so. Yeah. If it's made correctly. But, you know, let's make sure you get rid of one of them this time at least. They'll be focused on that with any luck. They will. So, get rid of the guard, but Team O'Leary has an opportunity to lie to again. Yeah, it's going to make the uh, draw tough. It is. It's going to be coming the other way, I think. And, you know, if this rock is made well, uh, I don't see Team's gains having anything except drawing around on the intern side, trying to catch a piece of the button. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, O'Leary is probably going to may even try to tap this... Uh, his Yellowstone up a few mm -hmm. inches. May as well. Certainly plenty of room. The guard's long enough. There's enough curl yes. there. Yes, for sure. So, out turn, draw, slight tap for Team O'Leary to lie to. Put some pressure on Team Skeins. Two ender here. For Team O'Leary, put them right back into this game, for sure. Team Skeins is going to want to mitigate that, though. Stones look, looks good. Just over curled. Oh, over curled like again. Came, well, I mean, not terribly, no. no. I mean, it's it's well buried. It's just, um, I think, I don't know if Team Skeins can get, can score if they hit the rock that's in the forefoot or tap it. They will have to slightly roll yeah, over um you know, to sort of roll into the red paint, we'll say. But it's a tricky little shot. I don't know, but the draw for one might be easier the other yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, you know, leaving you open for disappointment. The draw here is, well, like he's saying, if you tick and you roll here, you're not getting shot. So I don't know. I, I mean, I'm surmising. Trent seems to want to play that intern draw because he's standing over here on this side. Yeah. Folding his arms and saying, "This is what no, I want." I think, you know, <laughs> this looks like a good shot to me. It's a full four draw, T line. Yeah. Uh, no guards, really, to worry about. No. Nope. This is very makeable. Mm -hmm. T line draw, full four foot. You can always second guess yourself on this one because that that rock, you know, it doesn't. It looks like it's makeable, but it's a really hard shot so precise you're talking inches and this also is precise but easier for the sweepers to judge not as many things in the way um it's a straight open draw so you're not thinking about anything else you kind of leave it in the hands of your sweepers wait seems Wait's to be close. very close yeah. They're mm -hmm. on again, off again. Yeah, Wade's very close. He needs full four. Curl? Full four to score. Very nice. Well done. Fine shot. Very well done. Nice shot. shot. Yep. Many, many coaches over the years have said to me, if you can't draw, you can't skip. So good for Corey. Um, make, making that shot. Seven to three now for Team Skeins over Team O'Leary. After seven, and we're... Going into the eighth hand here. Team Smith is up seven to three over Team Thomas of Port Basque. 
the seventh end was blanked in the Young Simmons game, so they're in the eighth end now. It's uh, the score is still five to three for Team Young. Team Pettigrew and Team McNeil Lambswood have shaken hands with the uh, McNeil Lambswood team being victorious. And the women's game is still in the seventh end, and it's eight to three for Team Curtis over Team Hill. So Mike Mosier's being asked to draw top four, I suspect, being that they're up four points. Once again, they're not going to want too many guards in play, so... Nice rock by team... by uh, Mike again. And as you'd expect now, we're being called to throw up a corner guard. Generate some points. So Skane's uh, calling the rock in the house, which is uh, as planned. And uh, O'Leary calling for another corner guard. Nice guard there for Spencer Wicks. Classic setup, really, for uh, at this point in the game, given the score. Two corner guards, rocks in the uh, center sheet with a guard. Now the game shall begin with the, in this end. Gaines is in pretty good shape here with two rocks in the top four, even though there are guards in play. Um, they're not as at such a risk as they were in the in the previous end, Jeff. So you know I think they're just going to 
try and peel these guards off. If they get both the yellow guards, fine. If they don't, well, they won't be too unhappy with that because they'll likely leave another guard, another blue guard in front of their two rocks in the forefoot, and it's not a bad position to be in. I mean, they'd obviously prefer not to have any guards in play, but it's not terrible. Yeah, it's fine set up by Wix and yeah. Mosier or this end, and uh, oh, wow. And that's, that's you know, that's dandy. just putting the icing, <laughs> that, putting the icing Beautiful, in the cake. So. Really, for or icing on the cake for Team Skeins, and that's yeah. uh, that's a beautiful shot. While we have a second here, we should uh, give a shout out to the sponsors because, like we talked about yesterday, and we talk about a lot, is without sponsors, these teams can't travel as well as much as they would like to, and in, in order to, you know, improve their their chances of playing at nationals and gain experiences and things like that. And you can see from the logos on the ice here as well that. You know, the curling clubs um, around the country actually rely on sponsorship, too, to help them, you know, meet their operation operating needs. And it's really important um, that we take a few minutes to say thanks to, to those that um, sponsor these teams in events like this. So take a few seconds to let you know that uh, Team O'Leary's team is sponsored by Rising Edge and TD Bank. And Team Skeins is sponsored by uh, Pal Airlines, at Browning & Harvey, Nicole Barba's Real Realtor, Power Conditioning, Kitty Vitty Brewery, Ocean Management and Trading Company, Intertrack, Daryl Francis, and Liam Peacock. So um, some teams have plenty of sponsors. Some teams have a couple. Um, doesn't really matter, but the important thing is is that it's all really appreciated, and the, the curling community as a whole thanks the sponsors on behalf of all of the curlers and the curling clubs across Canada. We just can't operate and can't play this game without you, so thanks very much, guys. Really appreciate it. Many, many rocks in play now by Team Skeins and lots of trouble here nice. for Team O'Leary. They're going to have to make something fancy to get themselves out of this. Now, in the meantime, if they can make this shot and get those rocks off the forefoot, they've got lots of guards to go around, so... Yeah, and it's the eighth end. Mm -hmm. He's down four, so I guess got to make things happen. Yeah, so. he's got to score, so yeah. he needs to uh, he needs to make a big shot here. Oh dear. Oh dear! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh dear! Okay. Yeah, he was, um, you know, close, but he wasn't any more impressed at that yeah. point than you know, than uh, anyone would be. He's, his, mm -hmm. you know, he's pretty uh, disappointed, I think, with his results there. He won't be happy. Let's just say that. Really puts the icing on the cake here. So another There's guard. Going so up. many yeah. rocks in play now. It's going to be almost impossible for Team O'Leary to to make a play on anything really <laughs> Skeins calling for uh, or throwing another rock to uh, another guard I think if I was team Skeins I, I like the idea that they're going to block off this guard, uh, this other side here, but I would leave it as high as I could, I think. And, you know, you don't want to put it in too close. Give them a, you know, the other team will run your own rock in a, on yours. Yeah. And, you know, they're pretty they're the pretty desperate they're... here too, right? So they've got to have something to run in. So they're going to run whatever's available. So leaving it high, good shot. Well done. And so, O'Leary now has really no choice. He's got to clear up the front. Uh, can't yeah. get at those two blues as it stands now. He can He can probably promote his yellow rock a little, but I don't know if it will go in the right direction. No. Um, and I think, like you say, he's got to open this up a little bit and allow himself an opportunity to make make something with his rocks.
Uh, unfortunately, that needed to curl a little tiny bit more to remove that other, um, yeah, get cut, that other blue rock of that out of the way. Yeah, uh, yeah. And had he, and had he, he probably would have sent it through the two yellows, and he would have been in much better shape. But unfortunately, didn't really give himself any further advantage by making that shot. I imagine the guys are a bit frustrated at, at this point now because they're just really like that was just a sliver away from being yeah. made perfectly and and sometimes when you're playing a game like this you just really need some good luck to go your way and they don't don't seem to have any this end. Yeah, wrong side of the inches is Yeah. It? So um, in the women's game, Sarah Hill made a lovely draw against five to keep her team in it. So it's eight to four for Team Curtis in the eighth end. Team Curtis does have last rock. So they're up four with Hammer, um, which does give them really good control over that game. But uh, Sarah was able to save them from shaking hands for at least another end. <laughs> Well, another guard going up here. Long guard. Yeah, and I think with with Team Skeins right now, they've sort of committed to this play or this strategy mm -hmm. for this end, and there's really no point in doing anything else. They've they've um, they've got their eye on the ball here. Both the rocks in the top four are really well protected, so they may as well go all in. Yeah, at this point. You know, there's no way for O'Leary to score, mm -hmm. so you keep putting guards up there, and you're at least going to get one. Yes, exactly. Yep. Timeout called. The only shot, and it's a long shot, is that yellow rock you see there out to the left, the yellow guard. Yeah, yeah, the lone they yellow rock. In, they can, yeah. Yeah, run that in to the, to the forefoot, take out the two blues. Mm -hmm. Again, long shot. Long shot, tough but. Tough shot, but <laughs> at this, be all at they this have. point, is all they have. So, um, you may be forced to play that. They're looking at the red, or sorry, the blue, blue, yellow center line rocks to see if there's anything that can no. be had here. But I don't think there can. No. I don't think you can hit the second blue rock anywhere but on the center line side, which is going to promote the yellow rock in the wrong direction. I don't see this being helpful, but, but it may give them something for Sean's some other option for Sean's last rock. So the trouble with playing this is that it's often sometimes hard to figure out where the rock's going to land. And unless you know where they're going to mm. land, there may not be any advantage to it. I mean, it may be advantage. It might be advantageous, I but yeah, I, I don't know. The, I don't I see, see it. No. It's going to work for them. They may squirt the yellow rock out a little further. The one that's um, there on the on this uh, between the sponge towel and the Scotty sign on the right hand side. There, they may squirt that yellow rock a little to the right. And if so, then Sean would have two ways to get at the two blue rocks in the in the house. But that's uh. really all he's going to have. Well, I just don't see the yellow rock that's just off the front of the house going anywhere. It's not going to get hit. Well, if it does, there's still going to be yeah. a lot of rocks oh. in play in front. Yeah, He's got to so hit the top blue on the nose in order to come in contact with the yellow, and that's just going to leave the yellow rock in play. So, yeah. It did, I mean, it, he, he got, 
He freed yeah. up some yellow rocks, basically. So he's got a couple of options for his next yeah. shot, and uh, Trent can't take both options away. So in doing so, he's at least given himself a half a chance at a mm. shot. And uh, it'll be uh, Trent's job now, I suspect, to do something with that. If I were him, I might be intent. Yeah, I might be inclined to draw around all of it. Both that yellow and blue rock that are um, that are guarding um, the rocks in the forefoot are, are they're in zone two, so about yeah, halfway, and there's lots of room to draw around. Look, if you if you bring a rock in the house or now, you run the risk of giving. O'Leary something to, to hit and roll off of mm -hmm. into the button. So, I mean, as the stands are right now, um, so there I really don't see how O'Leary scores. Uh, that um, all he's got really is the run yellow from the right-hand side, which is not ideal because that's a really hard double to yeah, make. And, you know. um, and it looks like Trent is putting a guard on the yellow, the other yellow run back that's on the left-hand side of your screen. So, yeah. Um, his his goal here will be take that shot away. Yeah. And he's he's left he's left Sean with the with the least attractive shot that he can leave him, sure which is, is yeah. you know his job right now is to make Sean's shot really really hard, and he's going to do that. Well done. Well, team out there is looking at just running the blue in now and I guess try to eliminate all the all the rocks. And so he must feel that the yellow run on the right-hand side is not makeable, because yeah. otherwise you would play that, it being your own rock. So this is... Although I would have thought you could see enough of that yellow to run it into the two blues. You can. It's just the angle at which you're running it, I think, just jams it. So yeah. you're still going to give up a point. The only, you know... You couldn't, you it, couldn't run it back and then double the two blues? And you might, you're going to lose the yellow stone going into the house. Yeah, I think he's, he's concerned he's not going to make the double. I assume. Yeah, well, he's yeah. basically doing the same shot here now with a, right. with a blue and stone. Yeah, and running running the blue shot in is yeah. really not going to give him any ad advantage. No. Going to do something no. here, though. No. This is close. It is. Oh, ticked, Yeah, ticked, ticked both the guards. So there you go. Well, well, well. So there you go. Handshakes all around. Call it a night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, team Skeins will not throw their last rocks, so the score will stand at seven to three for Team Skeins. So they will be um, they will move up to a two and two record, and uh, Team O'Leary will drop to a one and three record. So the other games are still in play. The women's game is the last rock in the eighth end here. And it looks like a draw for two for Team Stacy Curtis, so that if she makes it, will put her up ten to four. And I imagine that that will mean a, a handshake. So it's a, a routine draw for two. No pressure on her. And we've got a tie game um, in our other men's game. It's five to five after eight ends with Last Rock now sitting uh, with Team Young. And Stacy made her draw for two, so they are also shaking hands. That game is over, and the score will go in the record book at ten and four. So Stacy improves her record to two and zero, oh, and uh, both Team Strong and Team Hill sit at zero oh and one. They will uh, Team Hill and Team Strong will be future game tomorrow afternoon um, from the Remax Center at 1.30 p.m. Newfoundland time. So. Hopefully you guys will be able to join us, and we'll see you then. That's um, it for Jeff and I for tonight. So good night, everyone. Thanks for watching. Good night, all.